Hello and welcome to this episode of Destination Midway. I'm Carl Zingheim, the staff historian for the USS Midway Museum in San Diego, and today we're going to cover the 17th anniversary month of the Midway being open to the public as a museum and destination attraction. Today we're coming to you live from inside the Wardroom Lounge. This is located on the second deck below the hangar deck of the Midway, not far from where the two wardrooms where the officers uh, dined, and the lounge was used to uh, allow the officers to gather prior to the assigned meal times. And so we're very proud to exhibit a new portion of the ship for our viewers as we cover this particular episode regarding our anniversary. Joining us today is an exclusive panel of people who are actually a part of the Midway family and helping in their own special ways in building the Midway into such an extraordinary attraction and community resource that it's become over these last 17 years. And joining us today we have Sarah Hanscom, who is the Director of Education and has been with us since 2004. Her department presides over a wide variety of uh, attractions and other types of interests for not only uh, elementary and junior and high school students, but also adult education programming as well. And we'll be getting into a little bit of the details of what those programs mean. We also have with us Jill Hammonds, who is the director of our membership department, and she's been with us uh, for going on 13 years now, and has really pioneered the use of having innovative attractions and other inducements to allow people to not only spend additional money to become a member, but to enjoy all the rich rewards that come from the program that she has developed. We also have with us Scott McGaugh, who not only had spent nearly a decade with the organization trying to bring the Midway to San Diego back in 2004, but was also for 16 years our director of marketing. His uh, challenges with marketing were not merely an ordinary sales uh, operation, but he also had to be able to find ways to make the Midway appealing and enticing, not only to the local market, but across the entire nation and internationally as well. And finally, we also have here our own Lori Switzer, a New England transplant who has been our director of volunteers for most of the ship's uh, history so far. And in fact, believe it or not, she actually presides over the single largest department in terms of personnel in the entire operation here on board the Midway. So thank you one and all. And uh, we're very delighted to be able to have you here to talk about what it takes to take the Midway, which is already an established and self-evident uh, attraction and a destination, and be able to work beyond that and to cement the Midway's ties with both our local community and abroad. So that's the unique feature we have with each of our panelists today, is that their responsibilities extend well beyond the confines of the ship next to the pier here in downtown San Diego. So we'll go ahead and uh, start with you, Jill. And so the first question we'd like to ask is, what does membership offer uh, with the Midway, apart from the traditional discounts for admission and such? What is it that would draw people to become a member for the Midway Museum? Uh, well, people become members certainly for the value. They look at the, um, how many times they think they will return and the cost of admission. And certainly everyone likes that blue light special. We all like bargains. And that definitely is one reason. But more and more people, particularly my members, are joining for an organization that has a cause and a good heart. And we absolutely do. Um, our cause is freedom. We're all about patriotism. And we believe that we are becoming America's living symbol of freedom as we are the West Coast version of the Statue of Liberty. And what better membership to join than something that is moving and meaningful and inspirational. So what is the range uh, of uh, opportunities or uh, enticements that the, the Midway offers your members? We have um, five levels of membership, all with various benefits and at various costs. We also have two levels of annual passes, 
with their own benefits as well. And um, one uh, group that we have that is wonderful are Midway veterans. There were 200,000 sailors on this ship that uh, for 47 years, and there's a whole lot of them still out there. And as a matter of fact, I would encourage any of you out there today who are Midway vets who served on this ship or know people to please contact us at midway.org, and we would love you to join our family. You would get a free lifetime membership uh, to thank you for your service. Thanks, Jill. And uh, moving to Sarah, you also have a, a specialized audience that you have to serve. So uh, not only, of course, do we offer a range of programs for minor education, but we also have some adult programs as well. But basically, in what ways does an aircraft carrier, of all things, have to offer to childhood education here in San Diego? Oh, so much. One of the wonderful things about being at Midway is we were able, Scott, Lori, Jill, all of us, we were able to be here on the ground floor. So rather than coming into something that's already really established, we could start, we could become that history, we could become that backbone. And so one of the really neat things from the very, very beginning, we went to our audience and said, what is it that you want? We went to the teaching community and said, what it is that you want? And San Diego is rich in the sciences. We have remarkable science. We have re remarkable biological sciences. We have so many cutting edge organizations here. But one of the things that we don't necessarily have is the physical science. The, what I would actually call the real sciences, how things work, the, uh, the engineering, the STEM, what is everyone talking about, STEM, the STEM education, and the teachers, even before STEM education became a word that everyone now uses, they told us that we are a remarkable place. We could make science, technology, engineering, and math come to not life. We could make it real. We could answer that question that kids always ask a teacher, and teachers want to be able to have that answer. Why do we need to learn yeah. this stuff? And that's what Midway offers. We answer that hardcore, why do we need to learn this stuff? Plus, Midway's cool. When the t kids come here, no matter how old you are, if you're eight or 80, well, I'm going to call everyone, um, someone, everyone, everyone's a learner. They look at the ship and say, wow. And in fact, one of our educators said to us, we need to call our, our ship or our programs the wow programs, because that's exactly what people say when they get off that bus, whether it's a tour bus or it's a school bus, they look up at Midway and they go, wow. Well, I'm sure a lot of teachers and parents, for that matter, are gratified to see that we actually demonstrate the application of all this theory uh, the kids are having to learn in the classroom. But for those who may not have already participated in such a program, how do you safeguard the kids? I mean, this is a, a capital ship, and although we've made some common sense modifications to allow day visitors, for instance, to be able to navigate the ship, how do you keep the little guys perfectly safe while they're having the exciting time of exploring the, the Midway? Uh, we have, we have a, a, an incredible group of educators who know exactly how to do that. And again, one of the wonderful things about Midway is they wanted to have all ages here. And Scott, you can probably remember this. In fact, Scott is the one who showed me where what we, the area we call Midway University. Mm -hmm. um, he mm -hmm. took us down there and I looked at this place and I went, and this it was it was it was not the way it looks now but now it is we have oh, close to nine classrooms where we can start the kids off in a safe and cutting edge environment in fact we work with organizations we have some great great partners and they helped us create those classrooms but one of the things they all said to us is make sure those classrooms stay ship like and so they they wanted to make sure we did carpet things, they wanted it so the kids really felt that they were in an area where the young men worked on while they were here on Midway. So I guarantee the kids have a wonderful time. If anything, sometimes it's the chaperones that we have to sort of <laughs> say, okay guys, behave. <laughs> the kids get it. Sometimes the grown-ups don't. Well, we also get testimonials uh, after the, the classes have Very returned to their so. schools, and I believe one student actually referred to the Midway visit as like uh, going to a medieval Death Star. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. That's, I, I remember that so much, and I think that's exactly what I always use that quote because we're cool. That's the bottom line. Midway's cool. And the kids get it, 
and our programs are, are, are really, really highlight that as well. All right. Well, Lori, shifting over to uh, the volunteer department, first off, just how many people are you actively tracking as volunteers uh, on the Midway in one capacity or another? On our active roster, the number fluctuates almost daily, but it's somewhere between seven and 900 volunteers are participating each month. Now, one thing that really makes the Midway Volunteer Program different from probably most any other nonprofit organization is the fact that the volunteers are integral to virtually every single operating department on this ship. Why is that? Why are they integral to every... Why do we have them all over? Because they are passionate about our cause. Um, they're very skilled. We have a extremely wide range of skill sets, backgrounds involved in volunteering, um, and they really leverage um, the mission. They, they tell our story well, being, authentically. Being an aircraft carrier, does that mean that all our volunteers are vet military veterans or served in the Navy? No, and that's um, a common myth I, I need to work on dispelling, is that uh, we welcome volunteers of all walks of life, um, civilians and veterans alike, even active duty. Um, and all skill sets. But they don't necessarily have to have a military background. As no, long as many they... do as they are um, often passion, passionate about their family's um, participation in the armed services and they want to remember them fondly and, and uh, revisit that if they were active duty. Why do you think so many people actually volunteer for this organization? Well, um, I think the thing I most hear often is um, that they like the camaraderie, um, the connection, the sense of family we have here, um, and sen certainly the sense of purpose that, that it gives them to be contributing. So you really do ensure that your program offers fulfillment for people who choose to give of their own uh, free time for our behalf. They do find it very fulfilling. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, Scott, uh, you served for 16 years as our Director of Marketing and your responsibilities were extraordinarily variegated. I mean, it's one thing to be able to develop the exhibits, displays and attractions and to even stand up a, a superb docent core to explain things to the public, but your duties actually picked up from outside the ship and extended all over and so what were your challenges in trying to make Midway a draw, not just for the local community, but for the nation and globally as well? Well, there was a couple different challenges, Carl, that come to mind. One is that almost every visitor to Midway, unless they're a Navy, uh, a Navy veteran, have never been aboard an aircraft carrier. They don't know what to expect. You know, they've seen a couple movies uh, in varying degrees, even internationally, but they really didn't understand uh, what the experience would be, uh, certainly in the early years, and then what it has evolved into. So a lot of it had to do with making the right kinds of promises, which is what marketing does. And then with Lori's great uh, docents and volunteers and the membership program in education, deliver on that when people come. You know, at the end of the day, it was word of mouth as much as anything else. Right. If we could get people coming here and understanding what this experience was all about, and it truly was, became an experience, not just a museum, um, they're the ones who then do the marketing for us in, in some respects. So it was a slow slog in some respects as we developed the museum and programs and flight simulators came online and other things, then we could change our messaging a little bit to become uh, today uh, an attraction uh, for all ages. We couldn't say that in the beginning because we weren't. When we had six aircraft, the day we opened, when you and I were here and most of us were all here. Uh, but So it's evolved over times to where now uh, it truly is not a museum but an experience and it's one for all ages uh, and really for all languages, people from around the world. Well, one thing that was really impressive uh, during your tenure as well was that marketing was not just showbiz or razzmatazz. Yeah. A tremendous amount of dedicated research had to go into it. Could you explain some of the market research that you had to engage in to be able to back up everything that you were promising? That's a great question. You know, in the beginning, we didn't have much at all, and we certainly didn't have the resources to do our own research. Um, I think one of the real secrets of, of Midway's success has been the support of San Diegans uh, from the very beginning, whether it's the volunteer program, the teachers, uh, people who join as members, and that includes other attractions and hotels, the zoo, uh, SeaWorld, and so on. My colleagues there shared their research 
uh, they really helped us get up to speed, if you will, in many ways in the very beginning. And then as we developed the resources and success and social media came along uh, in terms of that kind of opportunity for feedback, we realized what we had, uh, what was interesting to people. Uh, we see we research to this day. My successor takes a look at TripAdvisor. You read a hundred TripAdvisor reviews this week, and you have very good research on why people came, what they thought, what their product satisfaction is, and what they're telling their friends and family about. So things have changed over the years, certainly since 2004. Well, over the decade and a half of your tenure, uh, how did you witness the midway standing in these official uh, statistics and research? Um, it, it was always strong. Uh, obviously, the numbers were low in the beginning. Uh, and again, it was, I think, largely because we didn't overpromise. You know, and mm -hmm. we, we made sure that what we explained your experience would be was exactly what you were going to get, if you will. Where we probably, in retrospect, retrospect undershot the mark a little bit was the, the overwhelming impact of our docents. Uh, and the stories when they would share their stories and that was probably the biggest piece of learning uh, that we developed early on is people were coming here and coming away inspired and awed and deeply appreciative of their freedom largely because of the docents and the stories they told uh, as active duty personnel not just the airplanes not just looking at a big ship yes it's wow and yes it's cool that's as Sarah says absolutely critical but you read the reviews today more often than not they talk about um, the 75 and 80 year olds who, who share their stories of serving and sacrificing for America when they were 19 18 20 years of age and they're still on their feet up on the flight deck uh, sharing their experiences today uh, that to me is as a huge part of the driving, uh, a huge driver of Midway success and what people are talking about when they think of Midway. Yeah. And they're downright get giddy, I'd say, like the, the docents and oh, yes. are, are out there and they're so passionate and so happy to be there, be here and enjoying each other's company. And it and comes through. And it's, it's so it. different if it was another volunteer or employee reading a script. You know, here's how a plane launches. Or whatever, uh, or whatever the case may be, and there, there's a role for that in many museums, and it's a necessary one and an appropriate one. But we are so blessed to have again the support of San Diegans, uh, Navy veterans mm -hmm. who are willing to invest their most precious commodity, their time, uh, to share their stories, and we, uh, as an organization, benefit from that uh, beyond words. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, we're going to take a, a brief 30-minute break here, uh, but before we go. I'd like to remind our audience that if you'd like to make a donation and to help us uh, venture into our second decade of operations here in San Diego, please visit our website at www.midway.org for additional information. And so we'll come back in just half a minute. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. And in case you're just joining us, uh, I'm Carl Zingheim, the staff historian for the USS Midway Museum in San Diego. And for today's session, we're talking about certain programs that have been built over the Midway's 17 years that we've been celebrating this month that have helped uh, explain what the Midway mission is about and helping to promote uh, the Midway's purpose, not only to the San Diego community, but nationally and abroad as well. And with that, I'd like to return to Sarah Hanscom, our Director of Education. And uh, in our earlier segment, we discussed uh, at length uh, some of the programming you offer for, for youth, but we also have recently, in the last few years, extended our reach in education to the adult community as well. 
In particular, we have a, a summer program each year called the Midway Institute for Teachers. And in a nutshell, what does that offer? Midway Institute for Teachers, we knew that during the year we would really be focusing on kids, on students coming aboard, but we really wanted to we, we, we had some wonderful programs for kindergarten through eighth grade, but how can we serve the high school teacher and the high school student? And we knew that the high school students, it's hard to leave campus. So what we thought, let's develop a program called Teach the Teachers, or t tell them about, to develop teacher training in the summer. And one of the things that teachers wanted, and that's something that we always try to do, is, is develop programs that we know that are needed and the teachers wanted to know more about the Cold War, Vietnam, and Korea. Basically, what the, the, act, the active duty of, of what Midway was doing when she had her career. And so we established Midway Institute for Teachers. And every year, it's a national program. Pre-COVID, we saw about 100 teachers per, per year in our classrooms in the summer, and they had intensive classes in, in, in the areas of the Cold War, Vietnam, and Korea, where we brought in university professors and specialists in that area that were giving, that could give them the hot new topics and in-depth topics for their programs that they teach in, in, in their schools. Um, this year, we are going virtual. In fact, it's happening right now as, as we speak. And so we're seeing what it's like to have our virtual programming. And hopefully next year, we can bring teachers back to Midway and also have a virtual program. Now, teachers do have to apply. It is an application process, and you can find out about that application process if you are a teacher on our website, and it explains the, the rules and regs on how to become a Midway Institute for te Teachers participant. A remarkable aspect of the uh, MIT, as we call it, uh, program is the fact that most of the presentations actually come from university professors right. who have, uh, are contributing uh, their time during what would normally be a downtime as well. What kind of insight do you think they offer to uh, the high school teachers who are uh, attending this program? It's twofold. Number one is that they are getting the latest research. The, the, the professors that are, that are speaking are the professors that are really in the know about their topic. So they're getting the latest research. They also, the teachers really like the fact that this is a very um, collegial environment. They get to know each other very well and they also are treated with such great respect that it really becomes a um, uh, it just it becomes it, it becomes wonder, wonderful camaraderie for the teachers. In fact, we have what we now call Midway Institute alum. They're across the country, and um, what we're really excited about when it comes to digital learning is that we can now start developing programs for our alum. Now, we could very well have high school social studies or history teachers watching this program now or mm -hmm. when it goes on our site. How would they uh, be able to apply for attending future MIT sessions? Great question. Get on our website. We have a great website. Go to the education section. Look for Midway Institute for Teachers, and there is an application process. It's not, it's, you, you, it's not happening right now, but as soon as uh, the winter comes September, the application will be up there, and you do apply, and keep your fingers crossed, and you can join us. Wonderful. Uh, returning to Jill and uh, membership, you have probably one of the more exciting programs to put on periodically uh, within your department, and that is uh, something called the Live the Adventure uh, Series, or LTA. What is that, and why does it work so well for you? Well, it's because it's exciting. Um, again, we don't give just bumper stickers and keychains out. We give experiences and memories that are priceless and invaluable. And I have a special event background, and I felt as a plain old regular woman and a citizen of this county who really didn't know about Midway, I figured if I understood it and was excited, members would be as well, and it has proven to be incredible. The Live the Adventure presentation series is a quarterly dinner event that we do in person. I'm really, really hoping very soon we'll get to be back in person face to face because frankly I miss my members terribly. 
and they're on topics that are timely, that are emotional, that are uh, impactful. Members want to be uh, educated, entertained, and excited. And it's very, very important for them to then become our ambassadors. They take away this information and tell everyone how cool we are and how much we care. But generally, um, there are certain topics from that are very uh, difficult to talk about as well. Uh, veteran homelessness, um, POW families, um, we've done one on therapy dogs and post-traumatic stress, um, we've done ones on um, the gold star families, and again, these were topics I knew nothing about either. Um, Scott was the one who helped me create this very, um, it's, it's such a, a wonderful, wonderful benefit of membership that all members are invited to, and we have upwards to about 400 people that come quarterly. Um, and thank you for asking about that. It's kind of one of my one of my neat things I'm very proud of. Well, thank you've put you. on several of these, obviously. Oh, yes. So, what would you say would be your most memorable experience with hosting an LTA? Wow, that's a tough one. Well, I call it the when the cryometer's working. Yeah and the tears are running and it's been really for all of them but I would say the therapy dogs the canine therapy dogs the therapy dogs uh, I remember uh, battlefield medicine uh, what young men sacrifice well. and, and what they go through off the battlefield uh, at, at, with their casualties mm -hmm. uh, and Jill has recruited participants over the years who truly bear their souls and, and share their experiences sometimes in a very raw manner uh, but it just it makes it so valuable for our members to her, to her credit uh, that it's, it really has become a tradition within the membership department. Yeah. So there mm -hmm. is a tradition of sorts then of touching upon really deep or meaningful subject matter uh, for the members as well. Absolutely, because that works. I mean, you want to reach your constituents. You want them to leave going, wow, I had no idea. And a lot of these people also get involved on their own. They become donors to certain organizations mm -hmm. or they they get very much involved. The therapy dogs, I'm now on the board of Positive Teams, which provides um, therapy dogs to uh, folks with disabilities. It includes post-traumatic stress, but we had several of the dogs and the handlers and the patients here. The dogs were under the tables. No one even really knew they were all there. Um, and at the right time, they were all called out. These dogs appeared. We had patients who remember the young man who is, was terrified of facing a crowd. Mm -hmm. He'd had so much trauma when he was deployed. So he was giving his presentation with his back to us. And slowly, okay, here I go. <laughs> He turned around. He was able to get through it. He turned yeah. around. Turned the audience. And uh, he became self-sufficient. And he is living on his own with his dog. Mm -hmm. But it was wonderful. It was really, really a special night. Thanks. Uh, Scott, you also have uh, programming that does manage to uh, create stronger community ties. Uh, in addition to providing uh, a tourist destination during daytime hours, we also have an extensive calendar of special events that occur after hours. So what are the challenges in trying to play host to an entirely different nocturnal clientele? Well, we, when we were researching bringing it to Midway, we realized that private events at night being close to the convention center and downtown hotels could be an important part of the financial success of the museum. We did not fully understand or appreciate the challenges of being a split personality, a museum by day, mm -hmm. event venue by night. Uh, those first few years, Carl, as you'll recall, were very painful. To have 4,000 people aboard, they leave at five, and an hour and a half later, 2,000 come aboard for dinner, all the food and equipment has already been brought aboard. Uh, they would leave at 11. We'd have the load out till 2 in the morning. Uh, staff would report at 6 a.m. and we'd open again at 10 a.m. the next day. Uh, it was daunting to say the least and we never really fully thought that we would be hosting more than 400 daytime and evening events a year and limiting reservations to three years in advance. Uh, it put a real strain on uh, the ship itself, uh, the old elevators you know, that needed to be rebuilt and so on. So one of the more more 
bigger surprises was that part of the business, but it was an important part to reach another segment of the community uh, that we felt were as, was every bit as important as those who were visiting the museum by day. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the success became rather evident uh, after only a few years because how far in advance in the calendar are many of these events yeah. booked? Yeah. Uh, we limit it to three years, officially, to three years in advance. Uh, but when a convention of optometrists or, or surgeons book the convention center seven years in advance, mm -hmm. uh, they, that meeting planner often turns and calls midway to say, we'd like to have our opening night uh, reception on your flight deck. Uh, where else in San Diego can you introduce your constituency, your conference attendees to San Diego uniquely than on our flight deck? 12 months out of the year, or you want to do it in a hotel room. Uh, so we work with meeting planners in a variety of ways, uh, depending upon the realities of the marketplace. And another uh, aspect that we're all very proud of is the fact that Midway offers a special and most appropriate venue for the local military. Uh, they have all kinds of ceremonies uh, that they conduct and of course living in a post 9-11 world it's not like military bases or ships could open their doors for civilian guests for these ceremonies. Could you address how we address uh, help the military community, the active duty community with uh, that kind of load? Well that's an aspect of daily operations that the founders of the museum never saw coming. Uh, it, it was a surprise uh, in many ways that we would host upwards of 400 retirements, reenlistments, changes of command, memorial services on the flight deck, mostly during the day in public. Um, the Navy made it clear that there's, you know, the public families and so on that attend these ceremonies, it's easier, to your point, to come to Midway's flight deck than to get on base. And so they saw Midway as a great partner and resource and made their jobs a little bit easier. And it has proven, Carl, to be a huge added benefit for those who visit the museum from around the world. You know, they get to see a 25-year-old re-enlisting in front of mom and dad and his senior officer and swear allegiance to America and the defense of freedom for another four years. Or a, mm -hmm. a change of command for a, a, an air wing commander or a retirement ceremony for a one-star admiral who starts sharing his stories. And I think conversely, uh, the active duty personnel participating in those events, I think they really appreciate the recognition of, of being able to uh, conduct these ceremonies in front of the general public who respectfully stand back, um, but they're rock stars. Uh, yeah. I've seen so many families walk up to the young man who's just re-enlisted and ask to take their picture with him or her. Uh, it's not just a him. And, and I think so much of our military operates behind barbed wire and, and, and gates in, in today's world that to bring them out into the public and, and give the, op the public the opportunity to say their thank yous in a respectful way really makes it uh, a part of the operation of, of Midway that benefits not just the museum, but active duty personnel as well. We also uh, have branched out in, in this sub-venue uh, into international events and uh, even a naturalization ceremony or two. Fabulous. Yes. Uh, I love those. Yes. Uh, They're so it's, wonderful. It's one of my favorite events a year. I think it's now twice oh. a year when the Immigration Service holds its semi-annual service uh, ceremony. Anywhere from 80 uh, to 100 young men and women uh, who are serving in our uh, military already are sworn, being sworn in as American citizens. So they're foreign nationals in American uniform. They're willing to give their lives for America, and they're not even citizens not yet. Citizens. I didn't know that. I missed yeah. that in civics class somewhere yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. I was stunned to find that out. And amazing. to watch these young men stand uh, and be recognized from 30, 40 different countries, from Ghana to, to Russia to um, Norway, that these young men and women and, and many more are serving us, our country, our, our freedom uh, is, has truly made it, like Jill just said, one of my favorite events and really most rewarding events that we hold every year on Midway. Definitely. Uh, Lori, getting back to the world of volunteering, uh, we certainly uh, can recognize the tribute that we pay to the volunteers who give so uh, freely and fulfillingly uh, of their own time for our benefit. but. What do they get specifically? What kind of benefits do volunteers enjoy by being a part of your program here on the Midway? Well, beyond the camaraderie I mentioned before, um, we do have some nuts and bolts benefits like guest privileges and parking privileges, of course, uh, discounts at the cafe <laughs> and at the gift shop. Um, and then we have a pretty robust uh, volunteer awards program um, 
one that's merit-based. We give a Volunteer of the Month award each month. And we have a, an hourly-based award um, that is given each month. We recognize volunteers who cross those thresholds. Um, most notably the thousand hour level where they get a, an authentic leather navy flight jacket like the one you have You're on. Um, <laughs> and our president's circle, we have a, a pretty large handful of volunteers who have crossed 10,000 hours of service to the museum. Mm -hmm. well, I gotta, I gotta yes. also like to jump in and say I think one of the really, really special things about volunteering on Midway is that the volunteer, the jobs that they do are so meaningful. Yes. Yeah. Without them, we couldn't run our ship. Absolutely. And, and they are meaningful. And when you go to a lot of organizations, volunteers are just sort of a subgroup. Mm -hmm. Here at Midway, they're part of the family. And I think the Midway, I think that's because of what Lori's done. Mm -hmm. And um, they give, they go 100% because of that. And they're empowered to work in areas that require great skills, great talent, which they have. They're able to utilize that and they feel so worthwhile and they're allowed to do, they run this ship. We talk about it all the time. Yes. Without volunteers, it wouldn't be floating. A, a great example over the years is most for the private events we were talking about earlier and finally we get wrapped up at two in the morning or whatever. It's a volunteer who locks up a 47-year-old irreplaceable historic artifact, an mm -hmm. aircraft carrier born of World War II. He solely is responsible for making sure Midway is safe until the next morning. Yeah. How many other organizations would allow, if you will, a volunteer or trust a volunteer with that kind of responsibility? There are volunteers all over this ship, thanks to Lori's culture, that have the, the ability and the trust to make decisions that truly do dictate or certainly influence the success of this museum. Yeah. But one common drawback, uh, not just with organizations, but in life in general, is that when one does a good job or attains milestones, is how that's often unrecognized or even at best privately heralded. But you don't do that with your program. You are very public about uh, awarding people, uh, proclaiming uh, their achievements. Uh, for instance, how do you publicly uh, trumpet uh, these people who've attained uh, so much uh, in their volunteer status? Uh, well, one avenue that I'm really grateful for is San Diego Veterans Magazine has um, allowed us to celebrate some volunteer contributions there, and that's very public. Um, and I, just to add what these guys said, um, it's not a single-handed uh, task. We're all expressing our gratitude on a daily basis and I give a lot of credit to our president Mac McLaughlin yes. Um, yes. because of his leadership yes. really he has um, empowered them and given them ownership a sense of ownership and uh, volunteers have been very proactive in, in seeking out solutions to um, improving the museum in a variety of ways. Yeah. Also they are recognized in Currents, our new digital platform for our magazine um, and that goes all over the place. We have an all hands meeting that we just started back, yay, because wow. we're back to normal and I mean their friends or their family and it's a big rally. It's it's always about cheering and, and um, patting them on the back because these volunteers, these men and women, they come from everywhere. We've got people that take the train that come from Orange County. Train, I mean, ferry. It, it's just incredible because yeah. it means so much to them them and they love being here they love being here because they do get that acclaim yeah and for public um, accolades I do want to mention the internet of course um, our website and our Facebook um, profiles sure. we've um, highlighted a lot of volunteer profiles there mm -hmm. and including videos and such well, we do seem to have a common theme running here as well is that we have a significant thousands of people who uh, give of their time or of uh, their own wherewithal to support the museum, both in membership and amongst the volunteers. But we also make it a point each year to be able to have a specific public celebration for each of those two camps. Jill, what are we doing uh, this year for the, the membership dinner? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Well, we have done for nine years a steel beach party. And for those of you who don't know what that is, a steel beach party is a morale boosting 
beach party on a steel deck with no sand, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen wonderful pictures of these big soldiers in inflated pools of water. They play volleyball, they, ha they fish, they have a barbecue. This is like a, a, a tradition in the Navy. So we have started having these here. Um, this year, October 1st, for members, for members, sign up at midway.org, that um, we're going to be celebrating again. This will be a big one because we've been closed and it's going to be a celebration of being able to hug and, and be grateful. Our Steel Beach parties are highly anticipated and very much attended and talked about with music and dancing and great food and it's basically just letting members know how much we love them and care for them. It's definitely one of the events to attend in San Diego each year. Mm -hmm. And then of course we also have a volunteer recognition dinner yes. each year. Well, what are we doing this year? Well, um, this year we have a MASH theme, if that's what you're trying to pull from me. I, I don't know. That's great. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, we'll have MASH the camouflage. The, the movie and television series. Yeah. MASH okay. as in the television se awesome. series, yes. Yeah, so people will come in scrubs, hopefully, and uh, oh, bring their stethoscopes. There you go. <laughs> How appropriate when we're all wearing masks. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, Lori, you said you were looking for something specific uh, amongst volunteers today. What is that? Oh, our, we're currently, we're, although we have volunteers um, involved in all operations of the museum, we're currently, or actually we're always recruiting for safety and docent teams. Um, and then in addition to that, we're currently recruiting for guest services associates. We're looking for NOT team members. What is the NOT team? The NOT team, um, they make knotted items in the, in the fashion of fancy work, Navy, Navy fa fancy work. So uh, monkey fists or land, uh, survival bracelets in keychains or lanyards. Do they have to be former bosun's mates to be able to qualify <laughs> for that? They do not. Um, ah. Our very patient volunteer lead, Emery Bishop, will train them from scratch. Um, ah. So the volunteers make these knotted ah. items and then they basically uh, give them to guests in exchange for a suggested donation. And those donations have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Over seven hundred thousand. Over since we started the knot tying team in, in, in two thousand seven, over seven hundred thousand oh, dollars. And those right. are all go. Those oh all go goodness. to scholarships at San Diego High Foundation. Oh, that's fabulous! Yeah. And so, then, so, so we give yeah. we give this year we just gave out six scholarships. So and that's thanks to our not tying team. The proceeds of just having these designs made by this team uh, from ordinary oh, nylon geez. line go for a worthy cause as well. And we, we have them set up on the hangar deck on a frequent basis to show all their hard work uh, for, for anyone who cared to, to purchase something to contribute towards their scholarship program. Yeah, very meaningful. What yeah. else were you looking for beyond that? Um, beyond the, the guest services and not team, we're looking for folks to help in our air wing, although currently um, just folks who have access to North Island already and have some skills with basic tools. Uh, and we're looking for painters. Hmm. Uh, portraits, uh, landscape yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oil, oil paint. Uh, <laughs> interior, water, water interior painters yes. to assist water. with our exhibits team. Oh, our okay. Exhibits and ship restoration, uh, the engineering department, they're transforming spaces that still have not been uh, touched since 1992. Okay. Well, here, as we uh, draw to a close to, uh, for our program today, I'd like to ask a round robin question for everyone here. Basically, what is it that motivates you to come in? beyond the obvious inducement, of course, having a salary, but what is it that really gets you revved up, ready to face the day, Sarah? I think it's because everyone cares. We go ba I'll go back to education. We, we always say with our, uh, with our school programs that we're science plus. It's science, but they also, the kids get that this is a ship of patriotism, a ship of teamwork, a ship of service, and it's also, as I go back to another thing, it's, it's also a really fun environment. And again, the kids get that. I'm always, sometimes, just the other day, I was at a restaurant and one of, a person right next to me heard that I was working at Midway and she came up to me and she said, I'm really sorry, I don't mean to be interrupting you, but I used to go to Midway when I was a child mm -hmm. on a field trip and that was my very favorite field trip. And that's what Midway's all about. It's just 100% positive. Jill, what gets you across the, the brow each morning? Oh boy. Okay. I 
I'm so proud to work here. It is, it's the stuff that dreams are made of with regard to the caring and the emotion that is here. Uh, it's whether you're a guest, whether you're a student, whether you're on staff or a volunteer, everybody here seems to just get it. I'm so proud of the fact that this is also a humanitarian ship that saved so many um, fleeing Vietnamese during um, the fall of Saigon, when Mount Pinatubo blew. I mean, I feel like we're the good guys uh, out there. It just, it's, it's tangible, it's so real, um, and it comes from the top. It's, it's how we all were hired to um, have that little extra something with regard to caring um, and, and, and feeling the inspiration that, that we also are able to transmit to our constituents because it's real, it is genuine, it is not BS. <laughs> well, Lori, what about you? Oh, I mean, um, you've got, got such a Ditto all of that. Yeah. Um, there's just such good people here. Mm -hmm. um, the connections and uh, familial feel. I appreciate it. Family. Family. Yeah, now, sure. Scott, you were, of course, retired uh, from the Midway officially, yet you still care enough to devote yourself to our board of directors in a volunteer capacity. What drew you to continue your ties to the Midway? I think it's I know what it is. This place makes a difference for all the reasons mm -hmm. the ladies have just explained. But every year, a million, someday soon, two million people will come away better understanding what freedom is all about mm -hmm. and the cost of freedom, as trite as that sounds. The sacrifice, uh, they have a, a sense of engagement. Uh, they've been entertained and they don't realize it. Uh, you know, they drag their teenage daughters here and it's the daughters who don't want to leave. That tells us a lot, uh, not just from a business standpoint, that the messages uh, and, and the service, if you will, that this team provides, the docents and so on, really influences people's lives and, and educates them in a way that really gives them a different outlook on life that I think is going to stick with them for years. There aren't many businesses, if you will, that can do that. This place, for all the reasons we've talked about, makes a difference in people's lives from Boone, Iowa to Sydney, Australia, and that is a true privilege to be part of that. So true. Thank you, Scott. And thank you as well for tuning in and watching our special episode today. We appreciate that you're helping us to celebrate in our own manner our 17th year of operating as an attraction and as a community resource for not only San Diego but the world is large. And I'd also like to thank each one of our panelists for all of your insightful contributions as well as the service that you have contributed on behalf of the Midway and our community in your respective departments. And I'd also like to repeat if you'd like to continue in su supporting the Midway and to ensure that we carry on with all these worthy programs, please take a look at uh, what you might wish to donate and go to our website at www.midway.org to find further information. Also, uh, don't forget to follow us on social media and to look up my own uh, blog, Carl's Corner, on uh, social media as well. But before we go, I'd also like to take the opportunity to have a special shout out to the birthday today of our own producer, Dave Koontz. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dave. And so, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll look forward to entertaining you again next month. Take care. Yeah.